I've had a number of queries from a number of clients lately about a little software application called Zoom. You may have heard of it, you may be using it, but there are some features in Zoom that can be a little bit confusing to a new user. With that in mind, I thought I'd put together this little demonstration to answer some of the most common questions. Today I'll be using a Mac, but if you're a PC user don't you worry, because most of the functions are in exactly the same place. These common questions relate to the standalone version of the software regardless of the platform. So if you haven't downloaded the standalone version, better go get it now. I'm using version 4.6.11, which is current as at today's date, the 20th of April. So this may change in the future, but for now, let's get started with that. Okay, and there's my little fluffy doggy sitting there looking at me all day long. I'm not going to talk to her today. In fact, I'm going to start a meeting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to our Zoom application for the purposes of this demonstration and my life in general. I keep it in my dock. Keep a lot of things in my dock. Um, probably a few too many, judging by that. Okay, so now that we've got a, uh, a new Zoom window started, we're going to click on New Meeting. And who's that handsome dude in the, in the center of the frame there? Look at that. If we just move that off to the side a little bit. Now, of course, I'm going to want to talk to somebody. Who am I going to want to talk to? Um, I know who I'll talk to. Let's start a meeting. See down here, you've got a little participants button. I'm going to click on that. And over on the right hand side here, we've got a little invite button. So let's join a new meeting via email. You've got two options here. You've got to choose from your contacts. I only have one friend, my buddy Leon. Uh, well, I've got a few more friends than that, but for this, let's just assume I have one friend. But in case I want to talk to somebody different, I'm going to click on the email button here. Then we're going to go to my uh, provider, my my uh, my email provider. It's going to open me up a new window, and I'm going to be able to enjoy sending an email to somebody. Who can I meet with? I know who I'll meet with. That's... Uh, There we go. There's that handsome chap you were looking at earlier. Done. Type that in. You'll notice here there's a little um, shortcut to creating and sorry to go into a meeting and a password. Don't worry about any of that for now because you're just sending this and it's gone. So through the magic of passing a bit of time, we can see we finally received. And I can't tell you how long that was, but it felt like forever. But anyway, it, uh, it wasn't forever. It was probably only about 30 seconds. There's our meeting request. We're going to click on that little shortcut thingy there, and that's all we're going to need. What we've got here is we're going to open up the Zoom app, and there's that handsome devil all over again. Uh, so we are now in the meeting. Okay, one of the most common complaints or questions I have is people saying they can't be heard or they can't hear anyone talking to them during a meeting. Anyone that's married will know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, unlike marriage, uh, Zoom actually has some settings you can turn on and turn off. Hmm. Uh, okay, now the way you'll find those is just down the bottom left hand corner here, just under my name, that is the user. Click on that little thing that says mute. It's currently available as mute because the, uh, the microphone is actually working. If we want that microphone to stop working, click on it and the microphone has all, all of a sudden stopped working. You can see you are muted now. All right, so let's unmute that and go back to that little setting. Click on that and you've basically got all of the settings you're ever going to need to, to touch uh, with regards to audio. Top here, you've got your microphone settings. Directly under that, you've got your speaker settings. Input and output. Input, output, input, output. Now, as you can see here, I'm using a, well, I actually have selected a built-in microphone. However, I don't like the quality of the built-in microphone, so I bought myself one of these. This is, this is just an external external USB microphone. Plugs in via USB. Uh, really good value for money. Really good sound. In fact, you're listening to it right now. I'm going to change from my built-in microphone to the Yeti this is this little fella here is known as a Blue Yeti, made by a company called Blue. So we're going to click on that as our microphone. Don't go away. 
microphone setting is being selected as Yeti. Now, as your speakers, now this is probably the biggest thing you're going to need to know. Uh, speakers have to have, have to work or you won't hear anybody. So don't do what I've done in the past and had Yeti built in as my speaker because a microphone is not a speaker. A microphone can never be a speaker. You will need to select the speakers on your machine, whether that's a laptop or a big box machine, um, or, well, same as system or built-in output. Both of those are probably going to get you the same way. You can plug in external speakers, which case you'll get like surround sound of everybody talking at the same time. I'm not sure I'd recommend that. Uh, I often find just the speakers in my laptop are going to be perfectly adequate for this. Just don't select the microphone as a speaker. Uh, we're just going to go, oops, no, we're not going to go same as system. And we're not going to unmute. That was a bit of a cluster. We're going to go built-in output because that's the internal speakers. Simple. Can't get it wrong. Two settings. Probably the second most common question I'm asked is why I don't have video when I join a meeting. And as you remember with our audio settings in the bottom left hand corner of your meeting window is where everything starts to make sense. You see you've got mute and you've got stop video. If I click stop video here, I'm going to disappear. And this could very well be what everyone that you're meeting with sees of you. If I click it again, I see start video. There you go. Simple. Off. On off on if you want to get a little bit more technical there's some really good stuff actually buried within the video settings click on that little up arrow next to video and we're going to go to video settings you can see facetime hd camera is highlighted here it's got a big tick on it because i'm currently using the facetime camera on my laptop yours may seem different but it will just be the standard built-in um, video camera on your on your machine. Anyway, let's go into video settings because I've got a couple of queried things in here that do come up a little bit. One of the most common things people ask me about video, other than why don't I have any video during my meeting, is why is everything backwards? You see this little tick in the video uh, mirror my video box. Click on that. Ooh, what happened there? Ooh. Uh, what, you've, what this setting actually enables is it enables you to see what other people are seeing of you. Without this, everything's backwards. And you'll see my, my, no, it's, you'll see my background, my bookshelf is on this side. Where in actual fact, it's over, hang on. That's strange. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually over there. <laughs> Uh, right, another one I, I quite like to tick here too is under advanced settings, enable hardware acceleration for receiving video. Um, this, what this will do, what this setting will do is it will actually prioritize um, data coming in specifically for Zoom, so you're going to get a better quality signal. Um, I don't generally click the enable denoise because it can have an effect on skin tones. Uh, and it also makes the um, makes your computer work a lot harder to denoise. You can see I've got a bit of noise going in the background around here, but really this is only because it's a large window. Once it's all scaled down to about an inch or two wide on your computer screen, you're never even going to see it. So we click out of that, and that's pretty well everything you'll need to know about video. After those first two technical questions, why haven't I got any audio and why don't I have any video, definitely the third most popular question is, how can I change my background? Who'd have thought that would have been a, even an option uh, a year ago or six weeks ago? So let's go back down to our video settings and we're going to click that up arrow next to stop video and we're going to go to choose virtual background. Virtual background is just something that goes in the background behind you to be whatever you want. Uh, if you look here, we can see we've actually got a few baked in ones. These come standard with the Zoom application. We've got uh, the bridge in San Francisco. It looks a little grim. We've also got, oh, we've got Antcam from Deep in Your Grass. 
we've got something that very few people in the world could ever actually attest to having seen. Uh, fairly limited market, I would have thought. Uh, but uh, Aurora, Aurora Borealis. It's quite nice. I quite like that. But my favourite, hands down, has got to be the beach. That's uh, that's definitely a bit of me. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I was probably there at some point in a dream somewhere. Um, however, what if you want to put your own image in the background? Again, let's go back down to a virtual background setting. Let's get rid of uh, rid of that and put our own one in. Just along from Choose Virtual Background, you see there's a little plus sign here. Let's click on that. We're going to add an image this time. We could add a video, but I'd like to prefer to add an image. I have no idea what these are. This could be a bit of a breathtaking moment. Let's just go for the first one here and go open. Ha! Ah, relief. There we go. We have a nice shot of New Zealand. In fact, the South Island. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Mount Cook. And the funny colour is Lake Tikapo or the blue lake from the South Island. Uh, right, so that's how you do your own picture. And if you look at the difference between that and my stinky old office, you'll see that the backgrounds are certainly much more preferable. Choose your own image, but choose carefully, because remember, other people are going to see it. So I hope you found that of value. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.